The Bible says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. If you're dealing with distress and disappointment, you don't want to miss the message from Pastor Jason Howard of Amplify Church. He has an encouraging word just for you so your hope can arise like never before. And you're going to hear how your support through Cornerstone Television Network transformed the lives of people in Western Pennsylvania who were on the brink of giving up but found the hope of Christ through the ministry. Hope, hope Arising, Arising starts, starts now. now.
Oh, welcome everyone to our Hope Arising fundraiser. And we are blessed and honored that you have taken time out to join us. You know, the purpose of these special programs is that we want to share the vision of Cornerstone Television Network, which is literally to bring hope to a hurting a lost, a broken world. And then the Bible tells us, Pastor Jay, that there is provision for the vision. So as the vision is shared, we're asking people to partner with us so we can continue to bring that vision to a lost and hurting world. That's right. You know, that's why I'm so excited because whenever you're going through something in your life, God always sends a word. So listen, if you're discouraged right now, if you're struggling right now, you felt left alone, we're glad you've tuned in because once again, as Pastor Gary mentioned, there is provision mm -hmm. for the vision, your vision, but also we need your provision to help us keep the gospel preaching going across these airways, Pastor Amy. You're so right, Pastor Jay. And, and also to remember that in this world, you're going to have troubles, trials, disappointments, setbacks, but be of good cheer. I have yes, overcome yes. the world. And that is why we exist here at Cornerstone Television Network. And your support makes it possible for us to be a door of hope to the body of Christ in Pittsburgh and beyond. And we could not be more grateful for your partnership, for your linking up with us in broadcasting hope and faith and peace and good news. That's right. And you know, and if you're battling in some type of way with discouragement, maybe you felt disappointed. You know, I was just thinking, Pastor Gary, sometimes we have to stick around for the fantastic conclusion. <laughs> you know, Peter and them, they all said, I'm going back fishing. They didn't realize in three days everything was about right. to change. Come on. I used to fish, but when I knew he backslid when he fished, I had to give it up, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and so listen, if you're struggling, I believe that there's a turnaround that's happening right now. I believe that God has positioned you that wherever there seems to be a disappointment, there's a divine appointment right. that is coming your way. And you know what? For 44 years, Cornerstone Television has been that beacon of hope that's been sending it across the airwaves. And because of your faithful partnership and because of your support, CTVN continues to be a source of spiritual inspiration to thousands across the area. And especially for one of our viewers named Gina. Check out this testimony. Cornerstone TV, which I do. I've watched a lot of programs on Cornerstone TV. I love um, that you have a lot of teachers on there. Um, I do love your cartoons also, because <laughs> I'm a kid at heart. So I do watch some of the cartoons that are on there, but I love the pastors that are teachers, like da Stan Dr. Stanley, um, Dr. David Jeremiah, Joyce Myers, Joel, Joel Osteen, because I am very spiritual. Um, sometimes I have situations where I'm feeling down and I do go to Cornerstone TV to watch shows to lift me up, lift my spirits up. I battled depression. Um, I'm still battling it. Um, I do realize that it's going to be with me for the rest of my life, but I do look to the Lord to get me through days. I happen to watch a show on the Joyce Myers on Cornerstone TV had uh, one time, uh, she always talks about her father and what she's been through in her life. And that's pretty much lifted me up out of in my spirits from what I was going through in my time, feeling down and, you know, in my low moments. There are teachers on Cornerstone TV that will guide you in every step, every moment, every day in your life. Um, and they always guide you to the Lord above. A 
I just love stories like Gina's. It is so awesome to see how she's been ministered to and your financial investment into Cornerstone Television Networks plants seeds of love and encouragement in the lives of people like Gina every day. Our station is based right outside of Pittsburgh here. It covers more than 1.2 million households reaching, listen to this, 2.8 million people in Western and Central, Pen Central Pennsylvania. Right now on your screen, you can see this drone footage of our campus here at Cornerstone in Wall, Pennsylvania. And uh, when you're moved to give to this media ministry, you're helping our signal go out to the nations and people of all backgrounds and generations. And, and it's right from here, right from right there, our, uh, our, our tower is reaching people with the gospel, sending out the word 24 seven. And it's just thrilling, it's thrilling, it's thrilling to see that footage. Really good job, Larry. So uh, please be involved in what God is doing here. Right now, let's go over to Amy. Thanks, Tom. I am here with our special guest for Hope Arising today, Pastor Jason Howard of Amplify Church right here in the Pittsburgh area. Jason is a graduate of Hillsong International Leadership College in Sydney, Australia, and he's earned a master's degree from Fuller Theological Seminary. That's a mouthful. He is the proud father of four adopted children, Katia, Daniel, London, and Zion. Woo! Okay, yeah. Jason, we're so glad to have you with oh, us. Thanks, Amy. Appreciate How did it. I do with your... It's good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. With your bio. <laughs> wow. It makes me sound way more important than I am. That is so good. You are very important oh, to the body thanks. of Christ. You're thanks. important to Cornerstone Television, and I can't wait for people to hear from you. Oh, what, what's stirring right now in your heart? What is God showing you? Yeah, for sure. No, I'm pumped to be here tonight. And... You know, I'm going to share tonight a little bit about what happens when God doesn't do what you expect. Mm. And I think that we all deal with the reality of living in a world where what we hope for doesn't always pan out the way we hope that it does. Mm -hmm. What we pray for doesn't always get answered the way that we think it would. And how do we reconcile the fact that, like, we talk about a good God, but yet life isn't always good? Right. And how do we fill in that gap and what do we do with it? And I think that a lot of us have a lot of different responses to that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to talk about that tonight. And I think that there's a way that you can have hope even when life is not what you hope for. Mm -hmm. That is so right, because sometimes whenever people get born again, they get saved, they ask Jesus into their life, they think, Jason, that everything's gonna be perfect from then on. And there's this like fairy tale ending, and you know, I'm a huge like Hallmark movie fan where oh, everything <laughs> always turns out right, you my, know? My Grammy loves them. Does she? Oh, great. <laughs> me, and, me and Grammy, that is just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for that. <laughs> I've, I've watched them with her. And, okay, you know, thank so. God. Yeah, me and Grant. You are not old. That is not age. what I was implying at all. No. <laughs> That Sorry, is amazing. Amy. Okay, so tell us why we're laughing. A fun fact about Pastor Jason. A fun fact about me. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not fun at all. This is very serious. <laughs> Actually, I think my Grammy's watching. Hi, Grammy. <laughs> no, How um, can you not be fun? I no, no, I'm teasing. Um, I have this dream that I've had for a really long time to be an Olympic skier, mm -hmm. a ski racer. And I ski like I'm ski racing, but I'm nowhere near as good as an Olympic ski racer. So it's... Wow. Yeah, so that's the fun fact. So you do like the moguls and like crazy. I love it. It's the faster the better. Like the steeper, one to the better. ten, you go all fast. Full send, the whole okay, way. That is a great fun fact. That's a fun fact. Have yeah. you ever had a major crash? I have not, and I'm really surprised by that. Okay. That <laughs> I have be... not had broken bones. Okay. But um, so I served under uh, Lee, who started our church for many years, yeah. and every time that I'd be on my way up to ski, he would be on the phone with me, and he'd be like, "If you break a leg." I'm going to kill you. No, he didn't really yeah. say that, but it was like, don't break a leg. Don't. And so I had that like right. ingrained in my mind. Like I'm going to go the whole way, but mm -hmm. you know, I can't snap a leg. I got four kids I got to look after. Yeah. I can't have a broken leg. Big responsibilities. Yeah, for sure. So before you made me lose my train of thought, <laughs> Sorry by telling that. me I was like your grand, you know, me and Grammy are on the same page. Oh my gosh. I was thinking about how life doesn't always end up perfect. Oh my gosh. And your messaging tonight yeah. is, you know, disappointed yeah. with God. Yeah. And you know, what, what do we do? How do yeah. we find, this is hope arising. How do right. we find that hope? Yeah, and I, I think, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like you come to church or you, you hear about God, or maybe for those of you who don't go to church, mm -hmm. you hear things about Christianity. And 
you know, we talk about the fact that God is good. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, like if you come to Amplify our church, we, mm -hmm. we put the phrase, you are so loved on like everything. Mm -hmm. So it was like all of this positive messaging, like you yeah. are loved and God is good. But the truth is, is that sometimes I don't think that we have a good frame for how to still believe in the goodness of God, even when life isn't good. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> we pray and we hope, my little girl, London, she's amazing, she's 10. Oh, and every God. single night before she falls asleep, she prays, please take my fears away. You know, because she's had some nightmares and, yeah. and things like that here and there. And every night, yeah. please take my fears away. And yeah. the prayer continues every night. Mm. And the truth is, is that God is more powerful than our fears, right? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we have to face them. Mm. And so how do we have the, the ability to go through difficult things in life, but still believe in the goodness of God? Mm -hmm. Because if we stop believing in the goodness of God, then everything in life is just a dead end, mm -hmm. right? Then there's nothing good. And so right. what's the hope that we have for living? Right. And the human soul needs hope mm -hmm. in order to live. Yeah. Without hope, we, we can't function. Right. Like, and we were designed Amen. to have hope. And I think that it's easy to lose your hope, though, mm -hmm. when you feel like you've put your hope in God, but he didn't come through for you the way that you wanted him to. Mm. So many times as I look back on my life, the yeah. things that were the most disappointing, the yeah. most heartbreaking, a decade or two later, ended up being some of the greatest things that happened in right. my life because... He works everything out he for does. our good. He He's does. like that. He does, for sure. But when you're in it, oh. how do you have the strength to yes. keep going? Yes. And I think that we miss it sometimes. Yep. And we elongate the valley and we elongate the suffering because mm -hmm. we don't have what we need in order to still have hope when it feels like there's no reason to have hope. Wow. So that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. And I don't want to, I don't want to give no, all the answers right. right now, but it's like, right. man, I hope that if, if you're watching right now and you're frustrated with where you are in life, I hope that you stay with us right. because I believe that God can really speak to you. Yeah. And I believe he is a really important thing he wants to say right. to you. And maybe you're like London and you're saying, God, take this away from yeah, me. Yeah. Take this away from me every night. Tonight, Today, maybe you're going to get that answer. There's still so much more to come on Hope Arising. You don't want to miss Pastor Jason Howard's message about the power of pressing in to God in the midst of disappointment, plus more music to uplift your spirit from Oasis City Church. They're wild, they're awesome, they're anointed. We'll be right back. We're so grateful to God for the many lives touched through CTVN over the past 44 years. I'm Sydney Goldman, host of Hope Today. Yvonne wrote in saying, Cornerstone has been an integral part of my life for more than 20 years. I would feel such a spiritual void without 24 seven Christian programming. Everything we do here is made possible by God and you, our Cornerstone family. We love you, hope happens here, and we're so grateful for your support through the years. We love you. Hi, my name is Robin Heipel. I am the chaos coordinator, oop, I mean producer, for Sister to Sister, Hard Questions, and Dashing Dish. And I just wanna take a moment and say thank you to you for your support, for your prayers, for your faithfulness to Cornerstone Television for the last 43 years. It's people that you, that allow me to do the fun and great job that I have. I get to bring five very opinionated sisters to Sister to Sister and have them dive into the questions of life. I get to receive your questions for hard questions and have the pastors answer them from a biblical perspective in a world, biblical worldview. And I get to eat yummy food on Dashing Dish and bring you an entertaining show with Katie Farrell on Dashing Dish. And I'm just so honored and blessed to do that. And again, I wouldn't be able to do that. I've been here at Cornerstone for 33 years and this place is a family and you are family. And I just wanna say thank you, we love you and God bless you. Cause I got a promise from the Son of Man yeah. 
All right. How awesome was that? So good. You guys are amazing. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. So have you ever been disappointed by God? I think that we all have to reconcile this difficulty that we have between the life that we live and the life that we've really hoped to have lived. I know that I've asked God to do things. I've, I've prayed prayers time and time again, and yet found myself in situations in life where it's like, man, the prayer didn't get answered the way that I thought it should have been. I didn't, the prayer didn't answer the way I wanted it to be. And um, you can look at your life and say, what do I do with that? So, so I want to take you to the word of God, and I want to take you to the Bible, because I believe that there is hope. And if we don't learn how to live with hope, we're not going to be able to function the way that we were meant to function. The human heart has to have hope. That's, that's how we were designed. But life doesn't give us hope, right? Life steals hope from us. Um, we can't control the way that people treat us. We can't control what people say to us. We can't control a lot of the stuff that happens to us in life, right? And so how do we reconcile the gap between who is God and what does he have to do with the life that I'm currently living right now? But the good news is that there is hope. So lean in with me for a few minutes because there is hope. All right, so in John chapter 12, we're going to pick up the story, and at this point, Jesus is, like, wildly famous. He's, he's done miracles. He's got a huge following. People are really tracking with him, and Jesus has just done the unthinkable. Jesus has just raised a man from the dead, and everyone knows that this has happened. Lazarus, who was dead, is now walking around. Like, they saw it. Everyone knew it. And so everyone has this certain hope and this certain expectation for what Jesus is about to do. And so it's Passover, it's the, the biggest celebration on the Jewish calendar, and Jesus is about to enter into the capital city of Jerusalem. And the place goes wild. 
And here's why. Because they had a certain hope, a certain expectation for what Jesus was going to do. And the truth is, is that if you had talked to those people in that day, do you know what their expectation would have been? They fully believed that Jesus was going to walk into the city of Jerusalem and restore the nation of Israel. That They had a certain expectation on Jesus that he was going to come in and they had been living in a really, really bad situation where they're under the cloud of this, this corrupt this temple system and this corrupt king and ultimately Caesar in Rome who had kept the Israelites really oppressed. And so they see this man who's raising the dead, doing these incredible miracles, and he's making his way up to the capital city, and everyone has an expectation that he is going to set the people free. Like, Caesar's done. If this guy can raise someone from the dead, then who is Caesar to this guy? And the crowd goes crazy. So in John chapter 12, verse 12, it says, The next day the great crowd that had come for the festival, Passover, heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and they went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna. And that word, what that means, Hosanna, is he's going to save us. It's this praise exclamation which roughly translates, you save, or you can save, or please save us. And we can look back 2,000 years ago and miss the importance of what they were all saying. Because they're saying, you need to save us from our oppression. You need to save us from the political environment. You need to save us from the corruption of this world. And so Jesus goes into the city and he's hailed as a king. They say, blessed is the king of Israel. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And so he enters the city and there's this incredible parade and everyone's excited. But if you skip down a few verses in verse 17, it says the crowd that was with him when he raised Lazarus from the tomb continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, they went out to meet him. And the Pharisees, who were part of the religious establishment, said to each other, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world is going after him, like everyone's following him. And so even there, in that moment, you have a couple different responses to Jesus. You've got some people who are ready to celebrate him because they expect that he's going to save them. And that's because they believe that he could promise them freedom. And, and that's a beautiful thing, right? Like, they're going to celebrate the fact that Jesus can save them. The, 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 the problem with that is, is that many of those same people just a few days later, when Jesus didn't do what they wanted him to do, they turned on him. And the crowd basically went after him. Why? Because he didn't live up to their expectations. And so fast forward the clock a few days, and instead of Jesus entering the city and overthrowing the corrupt system and bringing political freedom to the people, this Messiah is dead. I mean, the same system that's oppressing us just took him out. And so they lost their hope. They, 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 they were jaded. Well, who's God? And wh where is he? And why isn't he doing what we need him to do? And so you had a bunch of different responses in those moments. I mean, you had some people who were like, he's not God. And I don't know if you've ever gotten to that point where we just lose hope in God altogether. Life is so hard. He didn't do what I wanted him to do. And so I'm giving up on God. I'm bailing on God. Some people were like, we don't accept that he is who he says he is. I think that a lot of us, when we're in a crisis of faith, that's exactly what we do, right? I mean, we look at our life. We try to reconcile the fact that we believe that there is a God. And we come to the conclusion that he must not really be what he says he is. Like, if he says he's good, how is that possible? Because this isn't good. And, and, and we reject him. We, we reject who he says he is. We, we reject his authority. You know, Pilate, one of the people that talked to Jesus that week, really questioned his authority. He said to Jesus, are you a king? I mean, everyone's saying that you're a king. Is that really who you are? And he's questioning the authority of Jesus. And I think that we all do that sometimes, right? If life doesn't go the way we want it to, we've trusted in God. We've, we've hoped in him. We've prayed. We've, you know, gone to church, whatever. And we're like, God, we need you to come through a certain way. And when it doesn't happen the way that we want it to go, we start to question him. Well, I mean, is he really good? Or, more specifically, did he really say that about my money? Did he really say that about sex? Did he really say that about relationships? And the reason why we start to question him is because we believe, when life doesn't go the way we want it to go, that if we take back control from him, that we can manipulate the outcome and get the life that we want our way. And so if I question his authority, if I question who he is, if I resist his authority, then I can take back control and I can make life what I want my life 
to be. And so I just start questioning. I don't know. Can I really trust him with, with my money? Can I really trust him with my emotions? Can I really trust him with my family? And the truth is, is that when he doesn't do what we want him to do, a lot of times we come to the conclusion that, no, maybe we, we can't trust him. And then you find another character come on the scene that week, Judas, who was one of Jesus' closest guys, and Judas betrays him. I mean, many of you are going to know the story that Ju Judas basically arranges to have Jesus handed over to the authorities, which ultimately leads to the crucifixion. And this is one of Jesus' closest friends who turns on him. And, and, and I believe that it's because Judas is looking at what Jesus is not doing and saying, we got to do something about this. We got to take control. We got to manipulate the situation. We got to take authority back and we got to handle this our way. And, and this is my speculation, but part of me wonders whether or not Judas did what he did because he thought that if he could back Jesus into a corner, Jesus would have to do what everyone hoped that he would do and fight back against all the authorities and overthrow them and establish the political freedom that they had all hoped for. It's my speculation. And the reason why I speculate that is because I, I've done that a few times. Like, Jesus, you didn't do what I wanted you to do. You didn't answer the way I wanted you to answer. And so I'm going to punish you. Like, like I'm, I'm going to come at you. I'm going to be mad at you. I'm going to be angry at you and see what you do then. And it's because we want to blame God for the crisis that we're in and the difficulties that we face. And I get that because if we believe that God is supreme and if we believe that God is sovereign and yet he didn't fix this for my kid or he didn't fix this for my income or he didn't fix this in my marriage, then obviously he's to blame for my problems. And we make him the enemy. It's his fault. I'm disappointed in him. He made it this way. Where are you? And we give up on him. We can try to overthrow his authority and say, well, I'm not going to trust you with any part of my life then. Because if you aren't going to be good to me, if you're not going to make life the way I need it to be made, then I just can't let you be my God. And that's ultimately what the crowds did that week. They just overthrew his authority and said, he, he, is, not, he is not our authority anymore. I mean, to the point where they, they, they killed him. But the really interesting thing to me about what happened during those last few hours of the life of Jesus is that you had the 12 closest followers. One of them left, he betrayed. But the moment that Jesus was arrested, there's 11 other guys and they have seen what Jesus has done. They've seen him do good things. They've seen him do miracles. They, they have their hope in God. And they've seen him time and time and time again do impossible things. But yet, when it all seems to hit the fan and Jesus is arrested, 10 of those 11 totally bail. Like they totally run the other way and they give up completely on Jesus. They, they go the opposite way. And so here's Jesus on the cross and those 10 closest followers are nowhere to be found. And, and I, I get that. Because sometimes it just feels easier to give up. Sometimes it feels easier to say, I'm just going to do it my own way. I'm, I'm just going to live life the way I need to live it. And I'm going to give up completely on God. And, and, and I feel that. Because sometimes it's easier not to have hope. In the moment, it feels easier to just give up and say, it's not worth it. It's too hard. And so I'm just going to survive. I'm just going to make it through. I, I don't have hope for the future. I, I don't have hope that God can hear my prayers or wants to hear my prayers. I don't have hope that he's going to fix it because it doesn't seem like he did fix it. And so I'm just going to bail on hope, bail on God, and I'm going to do it my own way. And I'm just going to survive instead of live the life I was supposed to live. And I wonder how many of you tonight or today are in survival mode and you're just making it. Like, like you don't have the capacity to dream. You feel like your prayers are just going through the motions. You, maybe you're still going to church, but it feels like you're just ticking the box. And you don't really have any faith for the future because life has just let you down one too many times. It has beat you up and taken your hope and taken your faith. And so 10 of Jesus' closest followers make that decision. We're just going to bail. We're just going to go back to what we did. But there's one disciple. Actually, there were two. One male disciple and Mary Magdalene who made a different decision. 
And Jesus is on the cross. And Mary, her life has been completely turned upside down by Jesus. He set her free. He gave her life. And John, Jesus' best friend. Let me tell you about Mary and John. Because Jesus is hanging on the cross. Everyone else has bailed. Everyone else has lost hope. Everyone else has said, God must not come through. He, he must not be good. He must not be true when we ask him to come through. And yet Mary and John, they don't give up. Mary and John were just as hurt as all the other people. That They were just as confused as everyone else. Mary and John had no better indication that Good Friday wasn't the end. But yet they stayed with Jesus. They, they pressed into hope. They said, I, I don't know why I am where I am. I am really hurting and really confused right now. But I'm going to lean in to Jesus. And they stayed at the cross. And the night ended for them the same way it ended for everyone else. Jesus is gone and life has to seem to move on. Saturday comes. It's silent. Nothing good happens. But then Sunday morning, right? Sunday morning comes and what's really interesting about Sunday morning is that the very first person to believe that Jesus had been risen from the dead was guess who? John. John and Peter go to the tomb and they see that the body is missing. And Peter's like, what's going on? But John, when he writes about his experience, he says, I went into the tomb and as soon as I saw the grave clothes wrapped up, I knew it. I knew that he had risen from the dead. And do you know who the very first person was to see Jesus alive? Mary Magdalene. And I think that there's a lesson in that for us. Because Mary and John kept hope even when they had no reason to have hope. They kept believing even when they had no reason to believe. They kept close to God, trusting him even when they were confused, even when they were hurt, even when they did not understand. And those were the two people to be the very first to receive the benefits of what Jesus was actually doing for them. Because no one knew on Friday that Friday was a necessary part of the plan. No one knew on Saturday that in the silence, God was still working. And when everyone had rejected Jesus, they thought that God had bailed. But the truth is, is that God was doing exactly what they needed. And the crowds that Sunday before expected Jesus to overthrow the political regime. But they had no idea that what God was actually working out was much bigger and much more important than a political solution. Because he wasn't overthrowing a political regime. He was overthrowing the regime of darkness, the regime of evil, the regime of depression, the regime that keeps us locked inside the soul. He wasn't just giving political freedom. He was giving freedom to all of humanity for anyone who would ever believe in him. But no one knew that on Friday. And no one knew that on Saturday. And almost everyone made the choice to reject his authority, to reject what he said, to bail on him, to run the other way. Almost everyone chose that because they couldn't see the big picture. But two, in the middle of their pain, confusion, disappointment, they leaned in. And they were the ones who saw for the first time what the big picture actually was. That he had come to overthrow everything wrong with the human condition. He came to set them free. And so here's what I wanna tell you. If you feel like you are confused, if, if you feel like you don't have any reasons to have hope, if you feel like you can't trust in the character of God, if you feel like God has not answered your prayers the way that you wanted him to, if you feel like God hasn't come through for you, if you feel like you have prayed the same thing a million times and he's still not answering. If you feel that way, here's what I want to tell you. He's still there. And he's still working. And he is still good. And you have a decision to make. You can run the other way and base all of your evidence on what you see with your own eyes. Or you can find yourself at the foot of the cross. 
not necessarily understanding why you are where you are, but knowing that God holds it all in his hands. That you might not know how the story ends, but the story will end with a resurrection. You, you may not know how the next decade plays out, but when we trust him, he takes what is dead and he resurrects it. When you stay with him, when you lean into him, when you let him be the king, even when you don't understand why he's doing what he's doing, he will take what is dead and he will resurrect it. And so I don't know how, I don't know when, but I know that he will. And, and that is the promise of the gospel. See, Jesus didn't really promise us that we would go through life and never have to go through Friday, never have to go through Silent Saturday. In fact, he pretty much promised us the exact opposite of that. That there are going to be times in life where we are not going to understand why we are where we are. But he also promised that there is always a Sunday morning. There is always a resurrection. There is always an ending that he holds in his hands. And so, I'm going to ask you to do something really, really hard tonight. I'm going to ask you in the middle of your confusion to decide to trust him anyway. To let him be king. To let him be the authority. To let him be the one that you lean into, even if you don't feel like it. And when you make that decision, here's what you find. You might feel like you're in the darkest moment of Black Friday, Good Friday. You might feel like you're in the silentest moment of Saturday. But he's still working. And he's still in it with you. And he's not bailing on you. And we have this promise. For God so loved the world that he went through Good Friday and he went through Silent Saturday so that we could have the hope of Sunday morning. That there is resurrection ahead. That there is life ahead. That there is a new chapter ahead. That God is good. He is faithful. And I might not always understand what he does, but he is always good. And so what I want you to do tonight is I want you to trust him. I, I want you to let him in to the questions that you have. Let him in to the confusion. Let him in to the pain. He's not afraid of your pain. He is not afraid of your questions. He is not afraid of your confusion. He is not afraid of your disappointment. But if you let him into those places, he will take what is dead and he will cause a resurrection. Because Sunday morning is coming. So will you trust him? Will you trust him? I have no promise for you tonight about how he's going to work or exactly what he's going to do. But what I can promise you tonight is that he loves you and that he holds the future in his hands. And that if you will lean into him in the darkest moments, he will be there for you. So I don't really know your story and I don't know what you're dealing with. And I don't know the prayers that you are still praying and still hoping for. I know that there are some people who've been praying the same thing for decades, and you are wondering whether or not God's ever going to come through. I don't know your story, but I do know that God is good. Because when I'm at my little girl's bedside at night, and night after night after night after night, she is praying, God, please take away my fears and my bad dreams. I know that he hears because I know that me as a father, when she calls out for help like that, you better believe I would drop everything in my life to be there for her. And she might be afraid right now. And the truth is, I know a lot more than her because I've lived a lot longer than her. And a lot of the things she's afraid about honestly don't make sense, right? They're irrational. Like I, I know enough to say that's, that's not really something that is worthy being afraid over. I know that. But she doesn't yet. She's 10 years old. And night after night after night, she calls out. And she's like, please take away my fears. And I know that my heart as a father is to sit there next to her bed, wrap my arms around her, comb her hair, and tell her, darling, I don't know why things are the way they are. And I don't know exactly how it's going to work out. But no matter what happens, I'm in it with you. And my arms are going to be wrapped around you. And I'm going to fight for you. And I'm going to hold you. And I'm going to stand by you. 
And I will fight every single thing that comes to take you out in this life. I would give my life for your future. And I am an earthly, imperfect man who has a lot of flaws and hasn't always done everything right. But I feel that way about my little girl. And I would never leave her in the middle of those fears. And the truth is, is that your father in heaven is a much better father than I am. He is much greater than I am. And he looks at you tonight and he says, even with more passion than I ever could, even with more desire than I ever could, he says to you, you just hang in there because I am with you in the pain. My arms are wrapped around you. I catch every single one of your tears and I hold on to them. I am never going to leave you. I am never going to give up on you. I'm going to fight against everything that tries to take you out. And with all of my passion and all of my heart, I am in it for you. And I will make sure that nothing takes you out in this life. And that is what your earthly father is saying to you tonight. And you may not understand how he does it or why he does what he does, but he's there with you. And he's not going to fail you because it's impossible for him to fail because this is the God who took the worst that the world had to offer him. He suffered on a cross, and he is the God who defeated it all and rose up from the grave. And he is still that powerful, and he's still that victorious, and he still holds your Sunday morning in his hands. He bought it for you with his own blood. He won it for you by going to hell and back for you. And he is not going to give up on you. So if you need someone to pray with you, call the number on the screen. Because there are people here to pray for you. And sometimes we just need someone to give us a little bit of encouragement and a little bit of hope. And there are people on the other end of that phone who are waiting for you to call. So they can pray with you and encourage you and stand with you in whatever it is that you are going through. You might not feel his arms wrapped around you in this moment. But you're going to feel some arms wrapped around you on the other end of that phone line. And they're not perfect people, but they represent the goodness of God. And they're going to be in it with you. And so I want to pray with you. And then we're going to keep going on with the night. And I really want to, to encourage you to, to keep leaning in. You know, there are a lot of people in this world who don't have a lot of hope. And the reason why this TV channel exists is to bring hope to people. And tonight we're going to ask you to be a part of making sure that this TV channel continues to bring hope to people. And I hope that you lean in because there's a lot of people who need Jesus. And I'm not the solution. And no person on earth is the solution. Jesus is the solution. But if we don't tell the world that there's a God who defeated death on their behalf, how are they going to know? They're not. And they're going to suffer in the Good Friday moments of their life because no one ever told them to just hang on because Sunday's coming. Let's pray together. Father, I pray, Lord, for every person watching right now, God, that they would feel your love wrapped around them. Everyone who's in a living room or watching on a phone or wherever they are, wherever they are that that their room right now would start to fill with your goodness and your presence and your love. That they would feel the power of your comforting Holy Spirit come and wrap around them and invade that room. And God, they would feel the loving arms of the Father calling them closer, saying, it's okay, son. It's okay, daughter. I know it's hard, but I'm with you. I know you don't know how it's going to work out, but I'm not going to fail you. God, I pray that every single person right now would start to feel your love wrap around them the people who are carrying bitterness and offense, God, that that would just start to unwind from their heart and their soul as your love comes and occupies that space. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So listen, we're going to transition now. There's, there's a story of a man who really had an incredible encounter. They really met God. It was via this TV station. And um, we want to share that story with you because there's a lot of people going through hard things and um, we just want to encourage you that there is a solution, and you can be a part of that solution. Thanks so much for your time. Take a look at this story. In my life, I grew up in a Christian home, and um, so I knew Jesus from a young age. I dealt with a lot of insecurity. So as I graduated high school, not sure what to do, uh, enrolled in the community college. It was that time the enemy just came like a flood and really gripped my heart with fear. And I literally thought I was gonna lose my life. I was gonna die and I couldn't shake it no matter what I did, no matter how much I prayed, no matter how much you know, I thought about peace and just ask God for that. So it came to the point and um, I drove from Somerset going up to college 
and this was probably about six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning to get ready for an eight o'clock class. And I, I knew of Cornerstone Television. My mom watched it faithfully for years. And so I knew where Cornerstone was, I'd pass it on my way. And I figured I'm just gonna go up, I can't um, go on. So I drove up the hill, I don't know who it was, but I knocked on the door and a gentleman came and I told him my story very quickly of how I just felt in despair. And he graciously invited me in and sat down with me. He took about 10, 15 minutes and just prayed with me. He shared Jesus with me. And at the, that moment, I can honestly say, it changed my life. I never had that fear grip me like it did before, but just knowing that Cornerstone's available, certainly on the air, but for me, it was a personal encounter with Cornerstone that set me, helped set me free. You know, if you're just tuning in, I really sense that there is truly hope arising in the atmosphere. You know, there's a scripture that says in the book of John chapter 12 that except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. I want to share something with you for a moment. As Pastor Jason was just ministering, I really sensed in my spirit that there are some of you right now that have been disappointed by God. You're facing some obstacles anyway. You feel like God has given up and you feel like it's over and done. And God is saying to you in this moment, you can choose to give me that disappointing situation and see what I can do with it, or you can die alone. I don't know what's disappointing to you, and I don't know what you've been facing, but I sense in my heart, even as Pastor Jason mentioned, that Sunday is not coming, but it's here. And I know maybe you're facing something in your marriage. Maybe you're facing a business that's failed. Maybe there's something in your life that has died, a promise that has seemingly died. But remember this, whenever you sow something in the ground, it never comes back the same way that you started with it. And there are many of you right now that are sitting with a promise and you had expectations saying, God, I know you're going to do this. God, I know things are going to change. God, I know you've got a plan and you've watched your promise die. Just like Pastor Jason mentioned, you watched us as the disciples. Put, they saw Jesus up on the cross. They went back fishing. But listen, God wants you to understand a new day is here. God is about to give you an instruction to start a brand new tomorrow. You can die with that seed, or you can sow it to God and say, God, I'm going to give it to you and watch him resurrect it and bring it back in a form that you never thought was unimaginable. When you take a corn seed and you put it into the ground, you don't get a corn seed back. You get stalks of corn. You put an apple seed. doesn't look like an apple into the ground. When you bring it back up, you get an apple tree and you get more than you ever had before. It might seem like it's died, but God's saying Sunday is now. And whenever you're in a situation when you're saying, God, my back is up against the wall, I don't know what to do, he always gives you an instruction. He always gives you a word, and if you follow it, he will take what the devil has meant for evil and turn it around for Amen. your good. Amen, and I don't know what you're facing, but I'm telling you right now, you're not tuning in by happenstance, and it's not a coincidence, but God said hope is arising. Sunday Amen. starts right now in this moment in your life. It may not come back the way that you saw it, but God says, I have a plan that will bring honor and glory to my name, Amen. and it's going to bring souls into the kingdom. And God's saying, if you will join with me in this miracle, I will work something supernatural in your life. So I'm going to ask you right now, as a sign of faith, God, this seemingly has died. I'm going to sow it in the ground. I'm going to give it to you and ask you to bring back something I never had before. And I know that you're sad. I know that you're downtrodden. I know that you're struggling. But know this, God has a plan for that circumstance. And if you will take a step of faith, I want you to say, Pastor Jay, I'm going to join with this word. And I'm going to sow a gift of $50 into this ministry. And you say, well, why would you ask me to do that? Because anytime God wants you to work a miracle... Every time God wants to work a miracle in your life, he always asks you to take your eyes off about you. What you're going through is not just about you, but God is not going to forget about you in your struggle. And if you'll say, God, I'm going to give this to you. And just like with your problem, your circumstance, God, I'm going to put this in the ground. I'm expecting you to resurrect it. God's saying, if you will put a seed into the ground, it's going to come back different. And I want you right now, and I'm going to count to three in just a minute. And I'm going to ask you to go to your phone and say, I'm going to partner with Cornerstone. I'm going to get a seed of $50, a seed of hope 
that, God, I'm putting this in the ground, expecting it not to come back. I'm, I'm going to send out hope across the airway, expecting it not to come back the same way I put it in. I believe God's going to work a miracle in your circumstance. There's about to be a word that's going to come to you. There's about to be instruction that's going to come to you. There's about to be a step of faith that you're going to take, that even as you put the kingdom first in the midst of your pain, God says, I will remember you. I will remember what you're going through. I will remember your situation. If you will follow me, put my kingdom first in the midst of your pain, I will bless you. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6, verse number 38, give and what? It will be given to you. Take your eyes off of your pain. Take your eyes off your circumstance and put it on the kingdom of God. And as you make it happen in the kingdom of God, God said, I will not let you down. Even as Pastor Jason preached, just as he wrapped his arms around his daughter and says, I'm not going to leave you in it. God says, I will not leave you. Would you go to your phone? On the count of three, I want you to run to your phone and dial 888-665-4483 and say, in the middle of my pain, I'm going to be a worshiper. I'm going to sow a seed of $50. I'm going to sow a seed of hope right now and believe God for the supernatural in my life. And as you put the kingdom of God first, God is going to bless you. On the count of three, are you ready? On the count of three, are you ready? Your Sunday starts today. No matter what day of the week it is spiritually, your Sunday starts today in this moment. If you will pick up that phone and take a step of faith, God says, as you seek my kingdom first and my righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. On the count of three, run to your phone and watch what God would do and watch it begin to turn that situation around for his honor and his glory. One, two, three. Now run to your phone right now. 888-665-4483. You can text to give. All of that is coming up right now. Your Sunday begins right now in this moment. And as you take care of the kingdom of God, God says, I will not forget about you and I will bless your life. He hasn't forgotten about you in your pain. He hasn't forgotten about your promise. It may go down one way, but Pastor Gary, it always comes up different. And if we're willing to partner with God, any miracle can happen. Sunday begins today. That's so true. <laughs> wow. And you know, <clears throat> that message by Pastor Jason Howard encapsulates what Cornerstone is all about. It's why we exist. It's why the Lord raised this ministry up 44 yeah. years ago. It's why the Lord gave the, the word, the vision to Norma Bixler and Russell, our founders, to raise high a yes. signal to the nations. Yes. Why? Because there are people out there that are disappointed by God. There are people out there that are feeling hopeless. There are people out there that are lost and without Christ. And we have the message yes. of yes. His glorious Come on. resurrection. Yes. Come on. Jesus is not dead. He's yes. alive. He's alive. He is risen from the dead. And God has given us that word for over 44 years. We've been preaching the good news 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year for the last 44 years. Yes. And when the Lord gave that, that vision to Norma Bixler, she had no idea what it would take to build a Christian television station or how expensive it would be. And she said, Lord, where am I going to get the money? And the Lord said, my people have the money and I will give you partners yes, yes. that will partner with you to fulfill that vision. And I want to ask you, Will you be one of those partners? Yes. You heard the word. Maybe you're one of those that's disappointed yourself. Maybe you're one of those that's struggling in your relationship with God and you have tuned in and you've been ministered to by the word today. We're asking you to plant a seed of $50 a month. That's right, $50 a month. The number is there on the screen, 888-665-4483. I know right now, right now, there are 25 of you. There are 25 of you that could go to the phone and fill up these phone lines like that because you heard the word, it bore witness with your spirit. You now are willing and obedient to partner with us. You just need to put legs on your faith, feet on your faith, 
and pick up that phone, 888-665-4483. $50 a month saying, yes, I will partner with Cornerstone Television to be that voice of hope. Pastor Amy, hope is arising yes. and there are so many people that are disappointed, that are disillusioned, that are questioning God. And that is the message that encapsulates what Cornerstone Television is all about. Jesus said to his disciples in John chapter 4, why would you say that the harvest is four months away? And listen to what Jesus said. Look at all the people coming. Now is harvest time. And the pure message of the gospel that we just heard is the very reason that we exist. We don't need something else to do. We're not here, guys, for us. We're not here because we have, you know, we're bored. We're not here just because we're here because of the gospel, because people need to hear the good news. You know, this past week we were out with a couple and they don't know Christ and they don't follow Christ and, and they're lost. And they were telling me, I'm up at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and I'm just scrolling through the TV channels. And he's like, and I saw your channel. I saw the network. And I thought, oh, my gosh, here I've got, I've got a personal friend who is lost and possibly going to hell, who is scrolling in the middle of the night through television and sees Cornerstone Television Network. And quite possibly, here's the message of the gospel that could change the trajectory of his life forever. That's why we give. That's why we sow. That's why we partner into this ministry. So we thank you for your gifts. We thank you for that financial gift. We thank you for thinking about us. We thank you for praying for us as we are busy in the harvest field. We're taking over the airwaves with the good news. So if you are just now joining us, you've tuned in to this very special broadcast of Hope Arising. And there is so much more to come. Make sure you go to the phone and give us a call right now with your gift. We're asking, this is just a point of contact. We're just asking, maybe you could do $50 a month and really help make a difference here at Cornerstone Television and this Hope Arising. Give us a call, 888-665-4483. And let's go to Tom. Thanks, Amy. Well, you've heard a powerful message from Pastor Jason tonight. You've heard a powerful testimony from Gary Brocker. You know, uh, when Gary was sharing about coming up the hill here and receiving prayer, I wasn't here that time, but my office used to be like 10 feet over there. <laughs> and there used to be people come in all the time and need prayer. They would just come up the hill. You know, Jesus started out his ministry by saying something really amazing. He said, blessed are the poor. You know, and we know now that that's poor in spirit. That is what we all are. We all are in that situation. But listen to this scripture. If you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord. He will repay you. So when you give to a ministry like this ministry, when you give to Cornerstone Television, we're looking for 25 people to give $50 a month. Maybe you could be one of those. But when you give, you're lending to the Lord because this is a ministry that blesses those who are poor in spirit. This is a ministry that, that has as its forefront to go into the homes, to go into the hospitals, to go into the prisons, go into the bars, go into everywhere there's a television, anywhere there's a computer, anywhere there's YouTube, anywhere there's a phone, and touch a life with the gospel. And when you invest in the kingdom here, you're seeing lives touch. Look, we need to see the phones out there just blow up with people calling and saying, I want to be part of those that are ministering to the poor in spirit. So why don't you do that right now? The number's on your screen, 888-665-4483. Call up and tell the prayer partner, I'm going to be one of those 25 to get $50 a month. Why don't you do that? Well, we go to Sydney, who's going to share some really interesting information. This year marks 44 years Cornerstone Television Network has been on the airways proclaiming and providing the good news of the gospel to millions of homes, not only just in the Pittsburgh region, but across the country and around the world. 
And it's because of your generous support and your donations that this miracle of God, this move of God is able to continue, that is able to impact the lives in different generations for more than four decades. And you know, one thing I love about hearing about Russ and Norma Bixler and about their vision and the legacy that God has put inside of their hearts, that they walked on faith, that they heeded the word of God, that they trusted in the Lord to believe that he was gonna do something miraculous, that he was gonna put what you're watching right now, Cornerstone Television Network, on the airwaves. And I just wanna share a little something with you that the first time when I started working here at Cornerstone, I got this book that Norma Bixler wrote called Faith Wins, and it's the story about Cornerstone. And in the beginning of it, it's a prophetic word released by Apostle Jane Hammond back in 2013, uh, talking about the generations. We know that we serve a God of the generations, that he is the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. And listen to this prophetic word that Jane Hammond prophesied to Norma more than 10 years ago about Cornerstone. And it says this, now the Lord says, I'm a God of the generations. I've described myself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the Lord says, daughter, this is to Norma, I want you to know that you've been part of the Abraham generation. And the Lord says, Pastor Gary Mitrick, you've been part of the Isaac generation. But the Lord says, the Jacob generation is even coming to Cornerstone Network. And the Lord says that there are so few of the younger generation that are even tuning the channel into Christian television now, the Lord says. And I am going to give the two of you strategies that are going to begin to blend the generations, to join the generations. And the Lord says it's not one generation handing a baton to the next, but it's three generations that are going to run together, says the Lord. And I'm going to bring forth the fresh and innovative voices, says the Lord, both young men and young women that are going to be part of this fire starter generation. They're going to be carriers of my glory, carriers of revival, the Lord says. And I'm going to raise up young revivalists and young reformers, says the Lord. I'm going to raise up those that move in the spirit and the power of God, but also walk in incredible holiness and incredible integrity. The Lord says they're going to be warriors, but they're also going to be worshipers. And the Lord says that you're going to put their faces out in the media and that it's going to begin to draw a groundswell of anointing within the young generation. And this part, and the Lord says, begin to pray and see a harvest coming from Cornerstone and to Cornerstone because what I will do in the Jacob generation says, the Lord. And just reading that, it just brings tears to my eyes because I remember reading that passage about seven years ago when I first started here about the blending of the generations. And can I tell you something? That word is coming to pass, that you don't see it right now, but behind the scenes, there's the Abraham, the Isaac, and the Jacob generation. You have Gen Xers, you have millennials, you have baby boomers. All of us are working together every day to bring the hope of the gospel into your living rooms, into your bedrooms, into the prison into homeless shelters. This is what we desire to do for you every day. And when you support Cornerstone Television Network, when you give from the bottom of your heart, whatever God tells you to do, you help us, enable us to bring the good news of the gospel to your homes, to the airways that we can make an impact and we can make a difference. Cornerstone is called for this move of God that is happening, that is coming forth. And it takes all of us, all of the generations running together as a family of God to do it. So we just encourage you today, will you seek God? Will you pray and ask him what you can do today to help us continue the legacy of Russ and Norma Bixler, to continue to give to Cornerstone, that we can see a harvest of souls, that we can see those from Gen Z all the way up to the silent generation give their lives to Jesus. Because I love what Norma Bixler said, that everyone ought to know who Jesus is. Everyone ought to know who Jesus is. Cornerstone Television for 44 years has been bringing hope into homes, into hospitals, into prisons. Our daily show here is called Hope Today because we are all about bringing hope to those who feel hopeless. You know, Hope Today airs four times each day. Our 8 p.m. is our most watched airing, but then our 1 a.m. show in the middle of the night has the second highest audience. Cornerstone Television is there when so many other ministries can't be there. We get to speak life. We get to speak God's promises. And we have our 24-7 prayer line. Do you know that since we started 44 years ago that we have received almost 3 million calls? 
And Eileen shared with us recently how Cornerstone Television was there for her when her mom was in hospice. And she called multiple times in the middle of the night and our prayer partners wrap their arms around her. When you join us in giving to Cornerstone Television, you get to be a hope giver. You get to be a part of what God is doing through Cornerstone Television. If you've watched for a long time and it has brought hope into you, ask God if you should partner with us and help keep our ministry strong, Angela. It's really remarkable to think for 44 years, this ministry has existed with integrity, not just bringing you the good news over the airways, but living the gospel message by being the hands and feet to the community right here next to the station and abroad. You know, scripture tells us that the pure religion is to take care of the widows and the orphans. And it's amazing to see Cornerstone reaching into Nepal and South Africa and Mexico, touching the lives of orphans, bringing food to the needy, education to those that don't have it. It is truly a standout ministry. And as a partner, know that you are a part of that harvest. We've been hearing today and yesterday how when we plant, when we sow, there's a harvest that comes back to us. Did you know that when you sow seed here, that everything that Cornerstone touches and does, you, my friend, receive a harvest, not just here in the land of the living, but stored up for you treasures in heaven that have eternal impact. What I love about that scripture too, Anna, is that when I think about the eternal treasures, I think a lot of those treasures are gonna be people. So the stories that you've been hearing, those when you're partnering, you're getting to experience that reward in heaven. You'll see their face before you and know that you are a part of allowing them meet Jesus and be fed. Right. One of my very favorite scriptures that, that I've applied in so many areas is do not become weary in doing good, but continue to sow those good seeds. And at just the right time, a harvest of blessing will come to you. Let's go. All right. We want to go right over to Pastor Gary. If you have just tuned in, we want you to know that Pastor Jason Howard brought a tremendous word, a relevant word about if you're struggling with disappointment, with discouragement, with hopelessness, and we are asking you, we're challenging you to plant a $50 a month seed. Maybe you're discouraged and overwhelmed because you're in debt. Listen, the number 50 is a jubilee seed. Yeah. And you could sow your way out of debt. So we need you to go to your phone, 888-665-4483. If you have been watching Cornerstone Television, enjoying the ministry, but you've never partnered with us, these programs, these few days where we pause from our regular program, we're asking you for your help. Go to the phone, 888-665-4483. We need you to sow $50 a month. And Pastor Jay, I know, I know, I know there's folks out there that could do that. That's right, so we need you to go to your phone right now, dial 888-665-4483. I'm sitting right here with Pastor Jason, and you know what, Pastor Jason, you just shared a word, and I believe there's a lot of people that are facing disappointment on Friday, but I believe your word today is releasing people as they're willing to activate it in faith, that it's gonna release a Sunday moment in their life. Sunday's always coming, right? And Amen. I like how you said Sunday's here. It Sunday's is, here. we have the benefits of the resurrection, and I just, I just feel like, Every time that I've stepped out and trusted God, even when it didn't make sense, God always comes through. But I do believe that God is looking at us to take action and to take our step to say, God, I believe you, I trust you, you know? And um, sometimes that defies how you feel in a moment. I've got to decide to trust and I've got to act on it. A faith without works is dead, right? And so taking action on that faith, I believe pulls you out of what you feel and it puts you in a different place. Come on, that's why we need you to go to your phones right now, 888-665-4483. Be one of those to sow that gift of $50. One of the 25 
Pastor Gary, you have felt that there's 25 people that can go to the phone right now and say, my Sunday begins right now. My season of hope starts right now. Pastor Amy, I believe yeah. that hope is supernaturally arising, but we've got to take a step. They got to take a step of faith. And as they do, God is going to begin to resurrect those situations in their lives. You know, we don't do this every week. We don't do this, you know, 10 times a year. We take a, a few times out of the year. We stop our regular programming to just say, hey, hello. Maybe you've been listening. You've been watching. You've been encouraged. You've been uplifted. You found hope. You found Christ, maybe. Maybe the lights turned on when you heard a scripture or a thought. And we're saying, listen, if, if Cornerstone television has impacted your life yeah. at all. You love it. You think, oh, I love that sister to sister show. It's my favorite show. Thank you. <laughs> I'm saying now's the time to give, like to sow, to help make it possible to keep it going in the airwaves and on YouTube and on Roku and on Facebook and on Insta and everywhere you can find Cornerstone Television is there, Pastor Gary, to give life away, to give light away, to give truth away. So give us a call at 888-665-4483. We're not trying to pull your strings. We're saying, hey, join us. Be a part of what God is doing on the earth. That's right. You challenge the sisters to sisters. I'll challenge the move your mountainers. Oh, All right, come who are on. They? Who are they? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and we will see what happens. Every phone needs to ring. Come on, some of you, you've been sitting back, you've been watching, but you need to take action. As Pastor Jason said, you need to rise up. Yeah. It, without faith, it's impossible to please God. This ministry is a ministry of faith. We've been here for 44 years, and we thank those of you that have been faithful partners with us over the years. Maybe you've stopped being an active partner, and God is calling you to come home again. Would you call and recommit with us? 888-665-4483. I know there's a number of you that could so. $50 a month, that Jubilee seed, so that we can continue to be a vibrant voice preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. And every person that souls, we've got a wonderful book here, Fear Must Fear. Not Win. Right. You know what? Discouragement isn't going to win. Disappointment isn't going to win. But you can't sit there and do nothing. You've got to activate your faith by taking a step. You heard the word from this man of God that you may be disappointed in this moment, but you know what? God wants to bless you in a supernatural way and wow. people are calling, calling in. in. Hallelujah. We've got Marilyn calling in from Utica, sowing a one-time gift of $20. And then we've got Ronald from Mahaffey, New York. Wow. Yeah, Praise God. Go. Sowing a one-time gift of $500. $100. See, that's that jubilee anointing. Hope yes. is arising yes, even yes. as you sow. And as you give, God is going to bless you. There are others that are calling in. You've got Carol from Charleroi calling it a one-time gift of $25. Gary from Pittsburgh, a one-time gift of $250. And then we have Joanne from White Oak, a one-time gift of $144. You need to go to your phone 888-665-4483. Come on, let's get those phones ringing. Let's get resurrection power going. Let's step out of our Friday and let's go into <laughs> our Sunday. Sunday starts now. While you go to your phone, we're going to go to Oasis City Worship. Hallelujah. I will 
in Pittsburgh and one day I decided I, I needed to go shopping downtown you know I did have a family and I was only seven minutes from the city of Pittsburgh and so I got on the bus and I went downtown and I did some shopping and I was uh, at Gimbel's and I started towards Kaufman's on Smithfield Street and when I was on the sidewalk there were people around me coming towards me, beside me, there were people waiting on the bus, all sorts of activity going on because in those days we didn't have all the malls that we have today and so everybody went downtown. They went to work, they went to shop, they went for whatever reason to eat lunch and I was looking at the people and there were all ages of people and there were short people and there were tall people and I was just looking at each one as I, they came towards me and um, and the Lord uh, said, you're looking at the people, but look in their eyes. And this is the only time this happened in my life. And you know, when the Lord speaks, you do what he says. And so I looked in their eyes and I just saw sadness and trouble and blank looks and I could see they were needy people, but, but when I looked in their eyes, I could tell they did not know who Jesus Christ is, but I did, but they didn't. And that's the reason I believe that God raised people up to put us here for you who are watching today. We needed a television station to tell about Jesus and all he can do for each one of us. And so that's why Cornerstone Television is here. It's for you because everybody ought to know who Jesus is. And we just trust that you're going to understand that you're going to know who Jesus is. a story by our founder Norma Bixler but you know what we've got some very oh. very exciting news yeah. we've got a number of our partners that have put together listen to this an unlimited matching challenge so for the next 25 minutes that's right in the next 25 minutes everyone that calls 
you, your gift will double the impact in what we're able to accomplish. You know, those 25 of you that could sow $50 a month in the next 25 minutes, it's like sowing $100 a month. So we're going to pray, Lord, anoint yes, yes, yes. this challenge in Jesus' name. And we're going to put up a 25-minute clock in ready, five, four, three, two, one. All right, the clock is ticking. Everybody can do something. You can do a one-time gift, a monthly gift. You could sow $84 a month, and your $1,000 gift is like sewing $2,000. $50 a month is like $100 a month. If you've never joined our family, $20 a month, come on in during this matching challenge. That's right, come on. So we need you to go to your phone right now, 24 minutes and just under 30 seconds, 888-665-4483. Listen, this is where you get to double the impact, right. where hope is arising in a supernatural way. But we need you to go and be one of those to sow that gift of $50 a month. It is Sunday, your Friday is over, it's time for you to step into your Sunday moment. So while you go to your phone and dial 888-665-4483 and help us double our impact, we're gonna go over to Tom. Thank you, you know, this is the time. This is the time, maybe you've been watching, you've heard a great uh, message by Pastor Jason, you've heard some great testimonies, but now is the time for you to get involved during this challenge. We have these, these folks that have challenged you. They're saying, hey, we're supporting this ministry. We're challenging you to support this ministry. And we've got someone here, Marilyn from Midland. Hey, Marilyn. She is giving $50 a month. Thank you so much. That is going to be an incredible impact into the things of God, into the things that are happening around here. It's just a, a blessing. It's amazing what God can do. So I want to just ask you uh, uh, to, 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 to think about this special way that you can give. It's called Easy Pledge, and uh, that is one you don't even have to worry about. It. You don't have to worry about sending a check or anything. You can call and ask the prayer partner. They can get you set up with that. And it, it, Easy Pledge will just be deducted every month from your bank account, like uh, many of us pay our bills now. It's a great way to do that. So why don't you do that now? In fact, we've got a, a little special spot about Easy Pledge. Watch this. At Cornerstone Television, our heart beats to reach just one more with the hope of Jesus Christ. Even when our world shakes, God can never be shaken. Will you join us in our life-saving mission? We can't do it without you. Our ministry is viewer supported, which means you help us to spread the gospel. Partner with us today through Easy Pledge, our automatic monthly giving program. Your contribution keeps our shows on the air. It makes our prayer lines available 24 seven, and it allows us to support other ministries through Cornerstone Care. Easy Pledge automatically deducts your gift every month using your credit or debit card. Sign up today by calling 888-665-4483 or by visiting our website at ctvn.org backslash donate. Thank you for helping us to be a bridge of hope to reach just one more. Automatic gifts make it so easy for you to get a part of what is happening here at Cornerstone TV. I mean, you have heard yesterday and today the various different outreaches that we do right here in Pittsburgh and abroad. And if you want to make an eternal impact, you can do it effortlessly here. Listen, we give blindly to organizations. We go in and we get our jeans from one of our stores that we love. We go and get our coffees and our donuts and we blindly give to these organizations that don't necessarily have an eternal uh, idea or an eternal um, outpouring or, or, or resourcing. But here at Cornerstone, you can know when you turn on that TV, not only are you exchanging your resources to receive hope into your life, but when you give to this ministry, you are soaking and pouring out the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world around us and making an eternal impact in lives, meeting basic needs in and the needs that will assure them a true good future with Jesus. Do you realize that as a Christian, you are an ambassador for Christ?
He has entrusted the gospel to you. See, he rose from the grave and then he went back to heaven and he is sitting at the throne beside God right now. And he gave us the Holy Spirit, the message of the good news to go out and share with others. It's called the Great Commission. If you want to be obedient to the Lord's calling on your life, if you're like, God, what is my calling? It's to go and share the good news. Simple as that. And if you've been partnering or watching Cornerstone Television and you've been thinking about joining us, tonight, right now, is your time to join us as a partner. Let's go over to Amy. Now is a great yeah. time to give in this matching challenge. And I wonder if your world is all about you. I don't know if that's a weird question, but is your money just all for you, all for me, all for I and my food, and my utilities and my gas and my kids and my house? I'm just asking the question because one of my favorite scriptures says that the world of the generous gets larger and larger and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. Maybe it's time, maybe it's your your moment that you, it's time to make impact. It's time to take that step of faith and, and stop being concerned just about you and your world. And I know it's so important, but maybe to take that step of faith, trust God and sow a seed into an incredible ministry yeah. that is seeing lives change for the gospel. Now's the time to give 888-665-4483. People are yeah, calling right now. We have Calvin that called in one time gift of $125. Yes. Thank you so much for that gift. Uh, Marjorie called with her gift of $20 a month. Amy called in with her gift of $20 a month. George called in with his gift of $20 a month. Wow, come on. Come on, come on. This, this is how we keep the gospel going out. You know, Pastor Jason, we pastor churches and it doesn't just happen. It takes finances to have the buildings, finances to, to have the air on and finances to have the water turned on. It, there's just a cost to the gospel. Amen. Yeah, and I know that the, the way that the kingdom advances is always through sacrifice. And, and I, I have to tell a story about Pastor Gary because Pastor Gary, I have to honor you because many years ago, you made a sacrificial decision regarding me. And as a result, it has produced a lot of life for me personally. I was on Pastor Gary's team and he sowed me as a seed after being with him for a couple years to start into a new ministry. And for the last couple of decades, I'm still in that ministry today. That's the church that I lead. As a result of your sacrifice, sacrificial generosity of giving me, sowing me as a seed into the ground, it's produced a huge harvest in my life. And I think so many times that when we do something sacrificial, we can't really see the impact of it in the moment. Right. But when you spend that out over years and years and years, the impact is exponential. And I'm living proof of that because of your sacrificial generosity mm. to release me. So thank you. You are an amazing man of God, Pastor Gary. Amen. Well, come on, folks. We are in the midst of an unlimited challenge. Yes, 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 17 yes. minutes and some change left. 888-665-4483. Everybody can do something. There's 25 of you that could sow that $50 a month seed. And during this challenge, it's like $100 a month. There's others, Pastor Jay, they could do $84 a month. And that is doubly impacted as well. That's right. So go to your phone right now, 888-665-4483. People are calling. Listen, if it gets busy, keep on dialing in. Why? It's Sunday. Pastor Jason just ministered. This is a Sunday moment. You might have been on the cross. Things might have been down and out. But guess what? God has not forgotten about you. He has sent a word. And in the middle of this challenge, you're getting an opportunity to double our impact. We've got Monte calling in already from New Kensington, sowing a one-time gift of, guess what? $1,000. Nice. Ladies That's and gentlemen, dope. that becomes now double impact in this moment. Come on, we got 16 minutes left. Come Would on, you go to your on, phone and sow on. that gift of $84 a month? Sow that $1,000 gift or that $50 gift a month. But as you do it, it's going to double our impact in a supernatural way. Go to your phone right now, 888-665-4483. And when you give to Cornerstone Network, we want to put this gift in your hands as a thank you. Now go to your phone, but check this out. Cornerstone Television wants you to live a life of boldness by learning how to overcome fear. This month, when you give your best gift, we'll send you Fear Must Not Win, finding peace, confidence, and courage in challenging times. 
One reader said Bishop Mark Filkey is one of those rare authors who addresses difficult life issues in a practical format while offering profound and relevant insights into how to overcome them. Fear must not win fully deals with fear. It defines it, exposes it, confronts it, and offers us truths to rise above it. Your gift enables CTVN to broadcast inspiring Bible-based programs along with a fully staffed prayer line 24-7. We can't do it without you. Call us today at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Hello family, my name's Dale. I'm in master control here. As you can see by all the equipment that's here, there's a lot goes on here during the day. We've been here for 43 years doing this and I've been here for 38 years. 38 years of working in the studio. I started in the studio running camera, floor directing, uh, production supervisor, production scheduler. And then 17 years ago, I came into master control. And I've been doing this ever since, and I hope to do it for a lot longer. Thanks for your support. Thanks for always being there for us. Thanks for always helping us. It's, we need to get God's word out. We need to tell people about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And I, we just thank you for your support. Keep calling. Keep being there for us. We'll be there for you. Thank you very much. I love that message from Dale. Dale hasn't been on camera a lot. He's been behind the camera. He's been behind the scenes. He's been working here for 38 years, seeing the fruit of what God is doing through this ministry. You know, I, right behind me here is the prayer partners. I started in the prayer ministry when I came here, spent my first 10 years in the prayer ministry, supervising that and recruiting volunteers. And it was always like, this is a, this is a ministry that has impact because people are hurting out there. We talked about that tonight. Pastor Jason talked about that. You heard Gary Brocker's testimony about that very thing, that people are hurting. Maybe you're one of those that are hurting. There's something inside of you that just, you can't seem to get a hold of God. Well, we've got prayer partners right now, right this very moment. You can call them and you can be part, they can be part of, uh, of bringing God's word and God's hope to you. Now, listen, we're asking for people to support this ministry and we have a challenge going on. We've got, what, about 13 more minutes. So you've got to get involved right now. This is the time during this challenge to get involved with what God is doing in the ministry here. So, uh, Go to the phone, 888-665-4483. Tell the prayer partner that you need prayer, but you also want to support this ministry. Look, we love you guys. We love that you love our programs. You watch Hope Today. You watch Hard Questions, the ones I'm involved in. You watch a lot of other ones. It's great to have you watching. We wouldn't have a ministry without you, but we wouldn't have a ministry without you supporting us as well. This is a challenge. Now's the time to go. So please go to the phone and be part of what God is doing. And you know what? We've really enjoyed the time of worship that we've had here tonight. So let's go to the team right now and worship the Lord. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room.
have an yeah. unlimited matching challenge, but we're running out of time. There's not a lot of time left. If you've been waiting and holding back, would you go to the phone right now? Come on, get up, yeah. get that cell phone. Call that number, 888-665-4483. Every gift has double impact. When you sow that $50 a month, it's like sowing $100 a month. If you sow $84 a month or that $1,000 gift like Monty did, it's like sowing $2,000. Everybody can do something. Some are sowing a one-time gift. Many are sowing a monthly gift. But we need everybody to do something. So go to the phone in the next seven minutes. Yeah. Let's get every phone ringing, brother. <laughs> Come on, 888-665-4483. It's Sunday. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you might be in the middle of a Friday moment, but listen, God has not forgotten about you. Pastor Jason just preached a powerful word that Sunday is here and God wants to resurrect every dead situation that's going on in your life. But we need you to sow because in these next six and a half minutes, every seed yes. you sow Amen. doubles our impact. We've been encouraging people to sow that gift of $50 a month or $84 a month. We need you to go to your phone right now and sow that gift. Something happens, Pastor Gary, at that thousand dollar level right. and you know you were talking about being disappointed or discouraged you know there's a scripture that says God will give you double for your trouble and in the midst of this matching challenge pastor Jason you know some people like you said they're stuck in that place where they think maybe nothing's ever going to change the enemy's making them feel hopeless but little do they know yeah. what God has on the other side that's right and I just think that it's got to be a decision to say I'm not staying here and and the way that you do that is you act in defiance of how you feel and you start taking steps of faith and I I'll tell you this I have never once regretted an act of generosity and I also tell you this it has always produced more than I could possibly imagine. God always honors generosity. And so I know that when you give, when you give towards God's work, when you give towards God's purposes, it always changes you yeah. as much as it changes the world around you. Yeah. So I, I think there's so much power in taking your eyes off of yourself and how you feel and getting it onto other people. It lifts you, it changes you. It changes the condition of your heart. And I believe it really opens you up to be able to step into what God has for you. And while you were preaching, I thought, I want to be John. I want to be Mary. I don't want to be the disciples that bailed. They bounced out. I want to be the one that showed up. I want to be the one that believed when it looked unbelievable. I wanted to be the one that runs to him. I want to be the one that's there to see his deliverance, to see that Jesus saves. So I wonder if you're today, like you're like, I, I want to wake up and be a part of kingdom. You know, when my kids, when my kids do something for me in the house, to me, I'm like, finally, that's what family does. Families come together. They link up together. It's not mom does everything. Dad does everything. We're here to serve you kids. And in the kingdom, it is very much like a family and it takes all of us. So we're asking you to do your part. We're asking you to hear from heaven. We're asking you, you know, if you want a number, $50 a month is a great That's right. get in gift to give and really be a part of the family. We're like, wow, you did the dishes. When my kids do the dishes, Pastor Gary, I'm like, oh my, thank you, Jesus. It's a miracle. When they make their bed. So just be a a part of what God is doing. Amen. <laughs> and you know, Luke 6, 38, when you give, it will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed out, shaken together, running over. God will cause men to give into your bosom. You know, Pastor Jay, about two weeks ago, my wife and I felt impressed to sow a seed. And within 24 hours, we got in the mail three different checks, but from three different avenues or sources. Wow. I remember Love going it. to the bank and cashing and depositing those checks. And I thought, Lord, look at God, yeah. how you didn't just bless me from one person or one source, but multiple sources of income, because that's how God works when we give to the work of the Lord. And that's the reason why you're given an opportunity right now to sow this gift, because when you sow, like Pastor Gary just mentioned, 
it paints you with a fragrance that attracts the supernatural favor of God and of man. The Bible says that when you give, it'll be given back unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men That's give right. into your bosom. So when you sow that gift of $50, when you sow that gift of $84, it not only does it double our impact, it doubles your favor. So go to your phone right now, 888-665-4483. We've only got a little bit under three minutes left. And while you go to your phone, we're going to go over to Tom and Angela. We are here. Angela, first time, first time for you being part of a, of a fundraiser with us. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for everyone that gives. Thank you for everyone that uh, supports this ministry and makes this ministry possible. What are your thoughts? You know, Tom, I think a lot of times we feel like in a desperate world and, and it's wicked and we look around and we see so much that we don't like. We turn on the news and it's anything but good news. How do we turn the tides? This is your opportunity. We do it by sowing into the places that are bringing the good news, the gospel message. We pour into the places where we want to see more of it. We sow into it. You know, there's a scripture, Proverbs 29, 2, Tom, that I love. It says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. It is time to change the tides in our society. And it begins. You may think you're too small to make a difference, but when you sow a seed here, you are truly beginning to change the tide for more of this to come. Absolutely. Now, we've just got a little bit left, so you've got to go. It's an urgent time. You've got to go to the phone right now to be part of this challenge. And I want to uh, recognize a couple of people that did. Anne has, uh, has been one of those people. She is giving a $50 a month a pledge. Thank you so much, Anne. And also, Nancy is also giving a one-time gift from Davisville, Pennsylvania. Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing. This ministry, the, the ministry that you see, the ministry of the prayer partners, the ministry of the broadcast, the ministry of Cornerstone Cares, all those things that we're doing, that we love doing, and we love having the impact we're having around the world and right here in Western Pennsylvania, it's only possible by you, you helping us. So thank you. Thank you. I yeah. mean, thank you, really. <laughs> truly, there's, there's not enough words to say thank you and express gratitude. And this is where we as believers truly can change things. You have the ability to make an eternal impact on thousands of lives without ever even leaving your home by sowing into the ministry here at Cornerstone. That's right. That's right. So again, thank you so much. Let's go back to the studio. Most of you know me from my on-air role here at Cornerstone Television, but behind the scenes, I'm the communications coordinator, which means part of my job is that all the good news, the reports that come into the station come across my desk, and I get to share the good news of the impact Cornerstone Television is making. Literally, we get letters from people in prison who are watching Cornerstone Television from prison. We get letters from people who spent weeks in the hospital and Cornerstone Television was in their hospital room. We get letters from people who have anxiety and fear in the middle of the night and Cornerstone Television was there for them. We have a story of a young woman in her 20s who was flipping through the channels and she heard the good news of Jesus Christ. And she called our prayer partners and they walked her through how to enter into a relationship with Jesus. None of that would be possible without the faithful support of our givers. Friends, time is running out. It's running out in this challenge and it's running out before Jesus comes back. Everyone ought to know who Jesus is. If your heart is stirring, if the Holy Spirit is telling you to give, know that God's word says to test him in this and see if the Lord of hosts, if he will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. God's blessings are coming to you as you give. Pastor Gary, over to you. Okay, well, the challenge just has about 30 some seconds left. If you're on the phone, when the clock runs out, we will still count you in this challenge. So go to the phone. It's not too late for you to give. 888-665-4483. And maybe those of you that 
don't want to call, I want to give you our address. Maybe you want to just, the Lord's put an amount on your heart, a seed that you could drop in the mail to us. Our address is Cornerstone Television Network. We're at 1 Signal Hill Drive, Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148-1499. Cornerstone Television Network, 1 Signal Hill Drive, Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148-1499. We've just got a few minutes left. We still have pledges that need read. People are calling in. Karen called in with her gift of $20 a month. Uh, Patty called in with her gift of $20 a month. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Gregory called in for $25 a month. Guys, I'm not the best at math, but I'm thinking like one Chick-fil-A meal a week. Yeah. If we could just sacrifice something you love yeah. for something you love even more, just to think about the harvest, just to think about the loss, just to think about those that are disappointed, discouraged, and hopeless so that they, Jay, can hear the good news. Amen. We've got others that are calling. We've got Gloria from Turtle Creek sowing $100 uh -huh. a month nice. for the next 12 months Yay. so that during our double impact, Listen, yeah. call in. It's not too late. There are others that are calling out there, Pastor yeah. Jason. Yeah, we got Yvonne with 50 bucks. We've got Jean who's given a gift here and it says that she's got bad eyes. So I'm just going to believe that God's going to yeah. touch you. There's going to be healing yes. and that God's going to yes. restore yes. you in Jesus' name. We've got someone who's given $240, $360. How awesome. Wow. Amen, so amen, good. amen. And Pastor Jason, before as we close this time with you, we just want you to pray for all of our Cornerstone family and all of those that have sown and for those that are in that place where they're discouraged, they're yeah. struggling with God and they need that resurrection power yes. to show up in their lives. Yeah, Would you let's pray? pray. Father, we thank you that you are a God who is yes. faithful. You are a God who is trustworthy. Water. Lord, our yes. hope is in you. Our eyes are locked on you. Lord, I thank you, Father, that your promises are more true than what we see with our eyes, than with what we hear other people say to us, yes. that your word is the eternal word, that your truth is the eternal truth. And so God, for everybody who's just experiencing hopelessness, I pray, Father, that they would start to feel your joy yes. right now. Yes. God, that, that they can trust that you love them, that you are for them and that joy would begin to displace their despair. And God, for the people who are resentful and, and just offended at the way that life has happened or people have treated them, God, I thank you that you are the forgiver and that you are the restorer. Yes. And I pray for the grace and, the, and the, the strength and the hope to be able to forgive and to let yes. go of the offense, that we might take hold of something much better, which is faith, trust that you are a good God and that you always come through. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Jason. Thanks we so me, appreciate you. Listen, there's lots more of hope arising. We're going to go out with Oasis City leading us in a time of worship. 